The first tool I got when I got into this was this chop saw a couple of years ago. And since then, I've expanded a little. But I've always been missing kind of the most essential tool to a wood shop. So today I'm going to fix that. And yes, it is going to fit in here. I'm going to start by making the frame for the table saw cabinet. And to make the frame, I'm just going to be using these pine 1x4s that I've already cut to size. And I'll build this frame up in four separate layers that will all be glued and laminated together. And I'll be overlapping the joints. So that'll provide a very strong and rigid yet pretty inexpensive frame. The main challenge I had when gluing up all of these layers was each piece wanted to slide past each other once I clamped down on the glue. So putting in a brad nail, if you have a brad nail gun, would really be ideal when gluing up these layers. These are the last two pieces to go on. And if you'll notice, there's a notch cut out in this one. And on the layer before, there's also a notch cut out. And that piece or that section is for accepting a cross member that will hold the two sides of the frame together. And it just made a lot more sense to cut those notches out before they were glued up rather than having to cut that out after everything's glued up. You can see what I mean here by how the edges don't quite line up since the boards were sliding around on me. So since I have a mini jointer here, I'm just going to use this and pass all four sides of the frame over the jointer to make those sides nice and flush. Now that I cleaned up the outside surfaces and the inside surfaces, and I also gave it a sanding, then this piece of the frame is pretty much done. And while you guys weren't looking, I made the second half of the frame. The cast iron top on the table saw is going to hang from this top rail with the body of the saw in the center here. To complete the rest of the frame and box this in, I'm going to add sheets of plywood to the front on the inside here and on the back on the inside and that'll make this pretty rigid. I'm also going to add that support structure up front here which is a couple more 1x4s to help tie in this frame and make it very rigid. This is a quarter sheet of half inch plywood and I need to cut this down to just under one foot by two foot so that it'll fit inside the frame here. And you know what would be the perfect tool for that? A handsaw. You guys are thinking a handsaw, right? If you are thinking that this seems a little bit short for a table saw stand, you're right because these casters add another four inches or so to the overall height and that should bring this up to a nice working height. One pretty annoying thing about this room is that the floor is not level. It's a good thing that these have brakes. 
I think now is a good time to switch gears from working on the stand to working on the saw. So we'll come back and finish this, but right now let's go take a look at the saw. This is a Craftsman 100 from the 1960s. I bought it off of Craigslist, and when I first got it, it was in pretty rough shape, especially the top. It was pretty rusty. I spent quite a bit of time and effort getting the top to back to a usable state. I used vinegar and just a wire brush on a drill to bring it back and get all the rust off. So here's what the top looks like now. It's rust free and nice and smooth. All of the internals were actually in really good condition. There's no broken parts. I just cleaned everything up uh, with a wire wheel to get all of the rust off. And I took everything apart, polished up some parts. I did replace the arbor bearings and put a new pulley since the original one was slightly bent. But other than that, I just reassembled everything with some dry lubrication and I'm ready to finish putting it all back together. So I'll do that now. I got the saw all put back together and I'm ready to put it up there. But I'm definitely going to need some reinforcements to do that. <laughs> The saw originally comes with an on-off switch mounted to the motor, but that's kind of sketchy considering you operate the saw from the front and you turn it off in the back. So I added this outlet down here, which is on a switch, which is located on the front of the saw. So you can turn the saw on and off from the front, and so that gives you nice, easy, and fast access to it. And that switch gets its main power through a new cord that I added that plugs into the wall. So when I go to change a blade, I can turn the motor off there, I can unplug it from that outlet, and I can unplug it from the wall. And if that doesn't satisfy the safety police, I don't know what would. That the saw is running I need to do something about the dust collection so I'm going to box in the bottom of this saw and provide a cavity here where I'll build a box for the sawdust to drop into and I also need to close up the back end of it so sawdust doesn't go out the back end either so I'll work on cutting out those pieces next I didn't really think this one through. To cover up the back of the saw for dust collection, I cut out this piece of plywood and it's just got cutouts for the motor and for the belt. And it just goes on using these keyways and the bolts that are just screwed right into the frame. This does prevent me from tilting the saw. So if I wanna make an angle cut, I'll just have to remove it, but that's why I made it easy to remove. I still need to cut out a hole in the bottom of this sheet so that the sawdust can fall down into a bucket that I plan on building down below. So I need to pull that sheet back out, cut out a hole, and then I'll put it back in. So now I've got a big hole for the sawdust to fall down. And I've also got a hole in the back here still that I need to plug. So I'm gonna cut a strip of plywood and put it in here at an angle, and that'll direct the sawdust back into the inside here. And this looks like the perfect thing to cut out on the table saw. And this is a very blurry video of my very first cut on this table saw. 
Of all the clips to mess up, this is the one I messed up. Can't win them all, I guess. To finish off the dust collection, I'm going to build a box down below that can be pulled out and that'll collect the dust and should be pretty good passive dust collection. But before I do that, which I want to use the table saw to make, I'm going to move on to the top and work on building the extension tables that'll go around the outside. This is my box joint jig for my miter saw. Yes, I realize there are box joint jigs for table saws, but I think it's pretty clear why I have one for my miter saw, since I'm just getting a table saw. I'm using this jig to make some box joints for the corner braces that will hold up the extension wings. And this will make for a very strong brace. And I'm also using hardwood so that these pieces are as strong as possible and will keep the extension wings nice and level uh, with the tabletop. Something different. Hmm. So you can see how these are going to attach now. And what I want to happen is when I put the extension wing on, for this surface to be perfectly flush with the tabletop. And right now it's sitting a little bit proud. So what I'm gonna do is just take this to the jointer and skim off a very thin layer. And I'll keep doing that until I get these two surfaces right flush to each other. To hold on the outfeed extension wing, I made a couple of these triangular braces and those will just get screwed right to the side of the frame here. And then to make sure that the two pieces of outfeed table are flush with each other, I'm going to glue on this piece on underneath and clamp it. That way I know both of these pieces will come out flush. When screwing down the outfeed section of this extension wing, I wasn't able to get these two surfaces to be flushed with each other by only using these four screws. And if we take a look with the straight edge across the table, we can see that there's a low spot on the outfeed portion of, of the cast iron top. And so that meant I was going to have to purposely bend or suck this portion of the outfeed table down so that it would be flush with the cast iron top 
So I needed to add two more screws right here, which I hadn't planned originally. And that me meant that I was going to have to add another support structure underneath in order to screw into. By adding this extra piece of plywood, that means my guard or sh dust shield doesn't fit here anymore. So I had to make a new one. And this one's a little bit smaller and it's held on with magnets this time that just snap onto the back of the saw cabinet. I think the extension wings came out great, but there's one problem. The factory fence, it clamps on the back side of the cast iron top to lock it in place. So obviously now that doesn't work with this outfeed table. And I guess that means I'm gonna have to make a new fence. This is a wooden table saw fence that I made using the plans from John Heiss. And it just attaches to the front of the saw using the same three bolts from the original fence rail. And the fence itself is all half inch plywood and it locks onto the rail with this cam. If you're interested in seeing how this is made, I'll leave a link down in the description to John's channel where you can check out a video where he shows you how to build this fence. I ended up changing my mind about having the pull-out drawer and instead I made this fixed box that I can hook my shop vac up to. Now that I'm done with the cabinet, the fence, and the dust collection, I think it's time to tear the whole thing apart, give everything some paint, and then put everything back together. And as exciting as that sounds, I think you'll be alright if we just skip to the final product. Every time I'm painting a project I always think, how boring it is and how I just wish it was over. But then when the projects turn out like this, suddenly it's all worth it. I did a couple other things when I was painting, including adding edge banding to the melamine top. And I also added foam gasket between the saw and the cabinet to fill in any gaps where sawdust might come out. I can't get back far enough really to show you a good shot of the whole thing in this room, so instead you'll just have to live with me spinning it around instead. This is definitely the biggest project I've ever done, but really it's just the beginning because the things I can make with this are endless. I'll see you in the next project. Thanks for watching.